All right, there we are. Good day, good evening, good night, wherever you are in the world. Um, my name is Andreas. I work for a consultancy in uh, Trondheim called Beck. Today we're going to talk about um, a product called OpenFast and serverless. So as most of you hopefully know by now, uh, the serverless hype and the serverless pattern, it's actually still made of servers. Um, it's just a technology pattern that the cloud providers has given us that abstracts away as much as possible of the need to run servers or even think about servers. There are still some servers there, but you don't have to think about them yourself. When we talk about serverless, what we usually mean is function as a service. So I'm going to probably mix up those two words, but if I say serverless, I mean function as a service, or if I say function as a service, I of course mean serverless. If we take a look at what the cloud providers has been offering us over the last couple of years, we can see a clear pattern here, is that they have taken over more and more of um, the maintenance of the actual servers um, and the technologies needed to host your code. One of the first things that arrived was infrastructure as a service, which took away the need for you to host your own data centers. Um, the cloud providers would offer you some virtualization platform. You would run your OSs on top of them, either if it was Linux or Windows. Um, and then you still had to think about the run times that your application needed. And then of course you had to write your applications. Um, and an application is, as we know, built up of, of functions. Then platform as a service came around, um, and now even the OS and the runtime was extra uh, abstracted away from you. You didn't have to think that much about it. Uh, containers and Kubernetes is a good example of this. You pick a language and you pick some sort of web framework or, uh, or a runtime, and then you could wrap it up in a container and the cloud providers would run this for you and scale it for you. Now, the next level up the abstraction uh, stack is then to take away all that and just function uh, just focus on the functions themselves which means that the part you deliver them is no longer a dll or a container runtime or a virtual machine it's your actual code your actual functions your classes so this is what we're going to take a look at today um, the cloud providers uh, have each their own option for function as a service. Uh, Google has Google Cloud Functions, um, uh, Microsoft has Azure Functions, and Amazon has Lambda Functions, or yeah, Amazon uh, AWS Lambda. So with function as a service and those patterns in our toolbox, what can we actually do? How do we leverage this in our applications? A very common pattern that you see is that we break up our systems into isolated parts that can be um, scaled and deployed individually of each other. So when, uh, when the microservices uh, hype hit some years ago, what it was all about was hacking up our monolithic systems into smaller parts that could be deployed uh, individually of each other, or hopefully individually of uh, each other, and then scaled up and down as you needed it. If one part of your system uh, had a lot of load, uh, if you were back in a monolithic days, then you would have to scale the entire system, even if parts of it wasn't used. When microservices came around, you could hack out those pieces and scale them and deploy them individually. Now, functions, uh, serverless and function as a service take that even further and break out your actual lines of code or functions into parts that can be deployed and run individual of each other. Um, another great thing about functions is that when a function is not used, when a code is not running, there is no process idling. They will trigger as they are needed. So the usual way you write architecture around functions is that they are event driven. It means that they are triggered by some event happening. It might be a message uh, occurring on a queue. It might be a database rule that's changed. It might be uh, triggered by a HTTP function from another part of the system, or it might be a scheduled trigger, scheduled function. 
Uh, an example of this might be if you have some IoT devices, uh, like some sensors, which are, uh, which are posting up uh, some readings, might be temperature sensors, for instance. Uh, the, these sensor readings can be, um, can be sent to a function which has only one job and it's to parse, um, parse the values and put them in something like a time series database that you can use some sort of dashboard over to have a look at. Because if you think about this use case, it makes no sense to have like a complete server stack just to take some simple readings, convert the data and put them in a data store. Um, a more advanced uh, example from uh, real life um, is that a company I used to call for, work for called Blue Eye Robotics, who is uh, the maker of underwater drones that some of you might have heard about. Um, in, uh, when we were diving with our drones, uh, we generated a lot of uh, metrics uh, and, uh, and log files. To be able to analyze these log files to look for errors or just get a status, uh, re status report of how the drone were doing, we were uploading the actual log files to uh, Azure blob storage. And when a log file, a raw log file hit the blob storage, that would trigger a function, an Azure function that would convert um, the log file data and put it in a relational database. And when the data was put in a database, that, was trigger, that would trigger another function that would go through the content and look for errors. Like if you had a humidity spike, uh, that might indicate a leak in the drone, for instance. And if any of those readings were off, it was uh, that function would uh, send a message, uh, message to Slack to notify us right away if anything was wrong. Um, the best part about this design is that for Blue Eye Robotics, who were making underwater drones, having to think about keeping servers up for these particular things, uh, is a no-go. We were making drones, not maintaining servers. So in, in that sort of way, using a uh, function as service and, uh, and the serverless pattern made total sense. Since serverless functions also scale automatically, um, this system would only cost what we were actually using in runtimes. So it was quite little. Now, serverless from a developer happiness standpoint, um, is also quite nice. Let's say you want to write some simple code that only takes in one data format and transformed it to another data format. Uh, like, uh, yeah, like the example with some log files that you wanted to put in a, in a database. Um, in, the, in the old uh, traditional way, you will have to choose some sort of runtime or language, then you would have to choose a web framework, and then you could get to actually coding and writing the functions that took the input data and transformed it and put it there where you want it. Function as a service, you don't have to do that. You can just go and write the code and deliver it to the platform that would run it. So some tips for writing serverless functions is that they should be short-lived, they should be single purpose, they should have no state, and they should be auto-scaling. The example uh, on, the right, uh, on the left side there is um, from a typical Python handler that would take some request and then just return hello world. And this is how simple a function can be. Now, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, projects have had huge success with the serverless pattern and saved a lot of money. If you don't need to maintain a server or think about uh, runtimes, um, that's really great. And since you only pay for the actual execution time of functions, uh, you can cap off lots of money over there. But you might be thinking, yeah, this serverless thing sounds quite cool, but I can't use it for some reason. But you kind of want, you kind of want to try it. Maybe you're doing uh, IoT devices, which are operating individually, not talking to the internet per se, or maybe you're out in the field doing uh, tech for agriculture, which has bad internet uh, connectivity. Or maybe your company or your project isn't using cloud technologies at all. I know there are a lot of companies who still use their uh, data centers that they have in their basements 
Uh, this is very common, uh, but you don't hear that hear that much about it because all the hype is about cloud computing, right? So all the guys with VMware farms in their basements aren't talking that much about it, and that kind of makes the kind of makes it hard to try out or use serverless technologies uh, in your project. But thankfully, there is this cool project called OpenFast. OpenFast is a serverless platform that you can install wherever you want, uh, which will run on container technology, uh, hence the little logo with the tail of the whale and the, and the crates there. Uh, OpenFast was created by a guy named uh, Alex Ellis at DockerCon in 2017 and has gotten a lot of traction since then. The project is completely open source uh, and it contains a lot of repositories. This is the main one with the, uh, with the uh, function as service runtime. As you can see, uh, as of last week, it had 7,000 stars on GitHub um, and a lot of contributors. So it's a very alive and good project. If you look at it from a thousand degree, uh, degrees uh, height, uh, the main components of OpenFast is an API gateway and a function watchdog. The API gateway is the component that provides the roots, roots to all your functions. This is also what you go through if you want to create functions or invoke functions. Now the function watchdog um, it's a little HTTP server written in Go that you integrate inside Docker containers to um, handle the communication to your uh, to your uh, your functions. Uh, in a nutshell, what the watchdog will do is that it will take HTTP uh, requests and it will convert them into uh, regular standard in and standard out signals that your code uh, can. Uh, um, can um, can read, and of course, since all this uses uh, container technology and orchestrators, um, you can run it wherever you want with wherever orchestrator you want. So, if you're on a laptop, for instance, you can use Docker Swarm. If you are uh, using virtual servers and Kubernetes, you can uh, you can use that. Or if you're doing IoT or edge computing. You can use this much simpler uh, K3S, which is a very uh, downscaled version of Kubernetes. OpenVault will work just perfectly on all these platforms. So the way it works is that you can either use the UI, this uh, CLI, or just REST calls to talk to the OpenFast gateway. Uh, the gateway will then talk to the uh, fast provider, and this can be a provider for Swarm, for instance, or Kubernetes or, uh, or K3S. And the provider is then responsible for spawning containers and talking uh, to the functions that are running in containers. Uh, the containers are then, of course, uh, drawn from some sort of container industry like the Docker Hub. Uh, another cool thing about it is that the gateway uh, uh, also, or the pro when you deploy the product, it also comes with a Prometheus installation, uh, and the gateway delivers Prometheus metrics. It also uses the Alert Manager, which is uh, a part of the Prometheus project to um, to provide auto scaling capabilities. So, based on the traffic to your functions, it will uh, spawn new uh, instances or containers uh, running your functions. So you can always have this auto scaling possibility. And as of scaffolding, uh, which is what most developers are interested in, who just want to write code straight away, the fast CLI is, uh, is where you go to create new functions. So what you see here is uh, the command to run, um, to create a new function based on Python. So this uh, command here um, is, uh, is where you pick your language, in this instance, Python 3, and you call it Python 3 function. And then it will uh, download the Docker images needed for running the code, and it will give you a main.py file. And what you see there is just a regular handler which takes in a request, and that's it. You can just start writing your code. So let's see actually how easy it is. To save you from uh, watching me uh, plunk along on the keyboard, I have, uh, I have some foilware for you with some uh, completed code. So. We're going to deploy a bike share function. 
Now, a lot of cities has uh, bike sharing services, uh, which uh, are uh, bikes you can just uh, download an app for and uh, and then rent and take wherever you want. Um, what's cool about this uh, uh, these bike sharing systems is that they in, most of them implement an open standard uh, for for uh, bike sharing. So you can actually write your own custom software that talks to them. So up on GitHub, there is an, a CSV file that contains a list of all um, these certified uh, bug sharing providers around the world, which contain uh, API endpoints. So what we are going to do is write a function, a simple function that just takes that CSV file, reads it, and converts it to JSON. So you can call it from other functions and then, for instance, see how many, uh, how many available bikes there are on your nearest bike sharing station. So to get started, I want to, I'm a C-sharp developer, so I would like to write my function in C-sharp. So to do that, I pull down a template for it. So I go to, I use the fast CLI to go to the open fast store and pull down, um, an image called the C-sharp Kestrel. And this will give me a template based on the .NET Kestrel HTTP uh, server, but I don't have to think about that. I'm just running this command, as you can see, it will pull down that template for me so I can use it. The next thing we do is say file CLI new and then select the C-sharp language. We're gonna call our project bike share providers. I'm going to prefix it with Andmos, which is my uh, Docker Hub username, because the result of this project will be a Docker container that you can run. So I would like, yeah, I would like to prefix it with my username, so I can just pr push it to Docker Hubs when we're when we're done. So as you can see with the output, the function uh, will create a folder called Bike Share Providers, and it will create something called a stack file, uh, which is a YAML uh, YAML file. Now, uh, if we take a look at this, the stack file, which is in this case called bike share providers, since it's that's the name of our project, is just a configuration file, which uh, you can uh, configure to say, where is my open fast uh, gateway and which functions is a part of this solution. Now, in this case, we just have one. Uh, and you can see the language is C-sharp, the handler, which is a folder containing the serverless functions, is called bike share provider and the image will be called bike share providers uh, with the latest tag. If you take a quick look inside the folder which we just created, you can see there are just two files there. And for C sharp developers, this will look quite familiar. We have a function handler CS and a function handler CS project file. And this is all. Um, your code, you put, uh, you put your code in the CS file and you put your uh, the, the dependencies you need if you need any new get packages or something like that in the CS project file. So if we take a look at the CS file, this is all the code that is needed to pull down the CSV file containing all the bike share systems that are available. So as you see, uh, from a developer's uh, standpoint, if you just want to uh, just want to convert something and print it out that as uh, JSON, and this is actually all the code you need. So there's no need to like choose a, a framework or or run a server or anything to just to be able to do this. All the all the um, scaffolding is done for you. As uh, as you can see, all the code also fits in one slide, so that's quite nice. With that done, we run the CLI and run the up command and pass it the stack file that we just looked at. Now, what will happen now is three things. First, we will build the image. Again, since uh, OpenFAS uses Docker containers, it will take uh, the, the um, .NET files and it will build it in, in the predefined image. And then it will push that image to Docker Hub so it's available. And then it will deploy it. And when it's deployed, it will print out the URL to your now, your now running function. Uh, that URL is, uh, is running on the, uh, on the gateway. So if you now take uh, a quick curl request to that URL, you will see that we will get some JSON back. Uh, this is uh, just one of the responses. It's the address for the Oslo city bike uh, system with the uh, API URL at the bottom. 
um, you can either call it via curl or you can use the CLI itself to just invoke the method. The result will be the same. Or you can even use the pre-built uh, pre UI, which OpenFast provides you, where you also can see some other functions which you can invoke. You also get some basic statistics about how many replications started running of this, uh, how many times have they been invoked, uh, and so on. So with that function done, the next thing you might want to do is create um, create something that um, reads one of these uh, API endpoints uh, endpoints for a bike uh, provider, and maybe print out how many available bikes there are, and maybe you want to use uh, use JavaScript for this. You want to use Node. Um, that's no problem. You can just scaffold up a new function and select Node as uh, your language, and you can append that to the stack file that we just looked at. That will be an exercise for the curious. We don't have time for to do that now. But to summarize, uh, the OpenFast platform uh, is an open servlet platform on your terms. Because it's open source and it runs on container technology, you can run it in everywhere. So that can be in your VMware cluster in the basement, or it can be up in Azure with uh, Azure Container Services, or it could be uh, in the Google Cloud or with Amazon. It doesn't have to doesn't matter. And that also avo uh, avoids cloud lock-in. You don't have to sell your soul to one of the cloud providers. You can easily move it around, which gives you uh, flexibility. Another cool thing about OpenFast is because of the function watchdog, uh, which I mentioned, uh, the code you're running or the container you're running doesn't actually has to be, uh, have to be a function. It can also be an existing microservice. So let's say you have some functions that you want to write, uh, run side by side with an existing microservices. You can just implement that watchdog in your existing Docker file and you can run them side by side. You can let OpenFast manage the deployment. So then you can convert them to other services if you want to uh, in your own time. It also makes deployment to Kubernetes a bit easier than it is today, because one of the big drawbacks with Kubernetes is that it can be really hard to, to manage and handle. So OpenFast is a quite a good abstraction on top of that. So that was what I had. I hope this was cool. So for all you serverless uh, guys out there, you should take a look at OpenFast. It's a quite cool project.